G'day, Steve Morgan here, Fishing Monthly Magazines with Mark Golden from Northside Marine. They sell a massive amount of the New Zealand built Staby craft boats. And Mark, uh, we've tested big Stabies before, but this is the yep. little boy in the range. Yeah, this is a, a sort of a fairly recent release. This is the 1450, which has been unbelievably successful since its release. Uh, it's just a little bit of a different Staby craft entry level uh, compared to the rest of their larger models. So. Uh, You'll, uh, you'll see very shortly when we hit the water, but uh, yeah, just a phenomenal little boat. Uh, punches well above its weight for only a 4.5 metre boat. So yeah, very exciting. It seems, uh, it seems difficult to compare this to a normal tinny because it's so much more than a normal tinny. It looks like the big Staby crafts have been shrunken down. And do you take any of those features from the big craft and incorporate them in this? Absolutely, yeah. As with all Staby craft, they run that 360 life ring. So this here is a foam filled pontoon, which creates you know, a massive amount of safety and stability. Um, so yeah, basically they have put all of the, you know, the beneficial features of, of those uh, Staby craft larger boats into this smaller one. So uh, a lot of people love the fact that they can get into a smaller sort of boat, really great fuel economy off a 50 horsepower Yamaha and still be able to venture and, and confidently, you know, take it offshore on a good days and stuff like that without having to get into that sort of six metre range. Now going to Staby craft 101, that life ring gives it amazing stability. I assume that is the number one selling feature? Uh, certainly a major selling feature that that safety and the, and the you know that it's virtually unsinkable uh, is something that you know obviously a lot of other brands can't sort of claim so uh, a lot of people gravitate towards them for those reasons but the benefit of you know really you know amazing performance and, and I mean today's a pretty beautiful flat day but when you do get a, a chance to take it out and, and you do get that rougher water uh, it's amazing how these things can handle. Now 50 horsepower on this rig is that the maximum horsepower? Correct, yeah, 50 horsepower pushes this along amazingly well. Um, we do about, you know, just over 50, 52 kilometres an hour as a top speed, um, but certainly plenty of power for this size model. Um, and yeah, 50 horsepower, certainly the recommendation on the side console. Now the 1450, it's a new model in the Staby Craft range. Tell us about the different versions you can get. You can get it from bare bones up into something like this, the flash model, so. Yeah, so there's three different models of the 1450 that starts out with a, a little uh, tiller steer model called an Explorer. So. Some, something that um, guys want to get into. Again, keep that, that budget price down. You can get them unpainted and start pretty basic. Um, they do have a mid-range side console called a Sportfish. Um, that one, again, you can get unpainted and you can spec it up to the way you want. This one here is the Profish, which is the highest in the 1450 range. Uh, and with this particular one, we've gone full paint and some of, the, some of the popular factory options. So it just gives you the opportunity to set the boat up however you wish. That's great, and the best thing about small boats like this, you can put them behind your standard car, you don't need to be upgrading tow vehicles if you're, if you're buying big boats, and it's just as happy crabbing up the rivers as it is out in Morton Bay, I assume. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, again, smaller boats give you some of those opportunities. Um, get, get people into the Stabby Craft brand. I think a lot of people will eventually upgrade knowing the, knowing the quality of the product. Um, but this just gives people an opportunity to get into something in a plate boat, uh, which is obviously very different to your pressed pressed aluminium boats uh, and then yeah basically that that will start that uh, that stabby craft sort of uh, adventure for, for our customers. Take us a little bit through uh, stabby craft they're made in New Zealand uh, tell us about a little bit about their history and uh, how come an Australian boat dealer is selling a New Zealand built boat? Um, I suppose purely because of quality um, yes we uh, obviously are an Australian dealer but yeah New Zealand do make some really good quality boats um, Stabby Craft is kind of now a worldwide uh, recognised brand. Um, it is, it's just basically through the fact that this is sort of not really rivalled in, in, uh, in Australia with anything that we, we can get our hands on. So um, just a huge brand for us and it just keeps going ahead in leaps and bounds. So uh, yeah, can't, can't sort of say enough good things about it. Yeah, well there you go. The guys that sell them definitely like them and what we do at Fishing Monthly, we like to put it on the water. We'll come back to you with some performance statistics.
Well, there you go. We were expecting a sort of a rougher day on Moreton Bay today, but it was slick calm out there. It was supposed to be 20 knots of northerly, which would have been a great day to test the, the rough water ability of this Stabby Craft 1450. Now, it's a little bit confusing, the different models in the Stabby Craft. You can start with a little Attila version. They go up to a, a bare bones side console version, or you have this, which is the, uh, the Frontier model uh, in the Pro Fish layout, and this is basically as good as it gets. Now, my first impressions about this boat was that uh, with these uh, with the sponsons on the side, you lose a lot of space on the inside, but when you get in the boat, in reality, all of the space that's in there is very, very usable because the boat is just so stable at rest. And it's not only stable at rest, it's also stable when you're driving it. Like a lot of tinnies will lean into a curve. This thing is flat. It corners flat, it sits flat. So we also noticed today that it rides a lot better when there's a little bit of weight up the front. So uh, normally you would have uh, an electric motor and a battery sitting up the front because the battery cradle is up the front for this. But when we move people around, that ride is superb when you get a little bit weight up the front and you let that uh, the deep V at the front do its thing. Um, the configuration is great for anglers that like doing a little bit of everything. If you want to throw some crab pots in it to go up a creek, it's all maintenance with a garden hose with that uh, EVA decking. Um, the trolling motor up the front, the casting deck is enough for one person up the front there. And you can even perch yourself up a little bit higher if you want to see if you can get yourself a bit more height for some side casting. But likewise, if you want to sit up the front and have the rods hanging at the back, it's probably pretty good for that as well. And the fact that this little boat uh, has some self-draining decks on it means that if you want to take on you know, the roughest of water, you can give it a go in this thing and you probably break yourself before you break the boat. Uh, but if you did take any water, it can drain straight out of the back and uh, a very safe little boat. Remember, it's only a 14 and a half footer. Um, the EVA decks I thought were a really nice touch. Um, worst thing is getting into a tinny which is unpainted on the inside and all of that reflection coming back onto you. Those EVA decks would help dull that down a lot and especially in the more tropical climates uh, like we are here in Queensland, that's pretty important. Um, there's no built-in fuel tank in this model. Uh, it just runs on the remote tote tanks. And when we have a look at the economy figures, um, the best economy was 3.9 kilometres per litre, doing uh, 31 kilometres an hour at 4,000 RPM. Now with a standard 25 litre remote tank, that gives you nearly 100 kilometres of range. So this is gonna be the sort of rig where if you're using it locally, you will get several trips out of one tank of juice. Um, so the fuel price doesn't really come into it in a, in a, in a motor that efficient. As I said, there are different versions of this boat. Um, an unpainted model with a tiller, but that same hull starts at around that $27,500 range. And you go right up to the, uh, the Frontier Pro Fish model, as we've tested here, comes in at $46,995. Um, if you want to join the Staby Craft family, this is a great way to do it if you want to test out the chops of the hull because you're going to be able to do nearly all of the sorts of fishing you like from this rig here. And uh, if you want to talk Staby Craft, Give the guys at Northside Marine a call. Talk to Mark Golden and uh, he can price you up one to suit your fishing needs. See them on www.northsidemarine.com.au and their socials are down the bottom of the page here.